What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth. This is EJ Joyful Plans and we are decorating my business slash social media slash what is Elizabeth doing with her life planner using the teacher layout from the Happy Planner. I've gone ahead and whited out the days of the week, which are typically Monday through Friday because this is a teacher planner. You have Monday through Friday, and then the idea is that you put subjects up at the top. Well, because I'm not a teacher and that's not what I'm using it for, and I want all seven days of the week, I whited this out and I'm putting the days of the week up at the top. So I am really excited about this spread today. I hope that it is therapeutic and relaxing for me because I'm using a lot of romantic and colorful items today. So I purchased these art looking illustr well they're art illustrations from Jojo's Pretty Paper Shop and I just think they are so pretty and I thought they would be so pretty with the washi tape from the washi tape shop that's I think it's like journal mem memory washi and journal washi I'll link these down below I'll link everything down below for sure so I thought some like script washi would be really pretty and then I haven't really gone hardcore into my layer, layering basics sticker book from Amber Plans Her Day and there are some beautiful paint swatches that I thought would work really well with kind of the artist theme thing we've got going on. So that is my plan today and of course I have to redate this but before I do that I think I want to do one of my favorite looks which is putting some of this washi down on the right side. It fills the margin in really well. And when you've got a washi that's this wide, it's very forgiving or it, it allows you to cover up the issues you've got from, well, the white out. However, I really like raw edges with my washi tape. And so I'm gonna take this washi tape and just rip it down the side, trying not to cut too far into the center of the washi because I, I want it to be wide. I just want that raw edge. So I'm gonna try to go as, as narrow as possible. That wasn't as, that wasn't as, uh, or sorry, as wide as possible. And uh, just so I can keep some of that, um, as much of the washi as possible covering up the, uh, that margin. And laying washi down like this is such an excellent way to fill space. And if you just don't know how to decorate something, I would just lay some washi down and put boxes on top. I just feel like that, I mean, already, I just think that looks so pretty. I've done a similar look before, so I'm not breaking any new ground here, but it is really lovely. And when I like something in my planner, I am far more inclined to do it again. I don't think that I want to do anything functional along here this week. I want to date up at the top and kind of play around with the space in here in a different kind of way. So I'm doing that because I've reorganized my business planner and I have other sections in my planner that are much more detailed with my to-dos, which means I, I'm not using my weekly layout for to-dos so much, so much as what happened this week. So I'm gonna go right off the bat and put this beautiful um, illustration of paintbrushes down here. And before I stick that down, I'm kind of wondering if I should start incorporating swatches already or if I should just keep to some of these more kind of pale tones that Jojo has included. Let me grab my trusty tweezers. These are science tweezers, lab tweezers, like in a biology or chemistry lab. I like them better than traditional tweezers because they're extra long and they get my hands out of the way. So when I'm trying to figure out where I want to place a sticker, I really appreciate having a longer handle. So I'm gonna use these to kind of figure out how I'd wanna place this. Maybe we just go for it. We just do a swipe swipe like that just to kind of add a little bit of color that's really pretty um let me see I could put another brush maybe here and 
maybe a smaller little pink swatch. And this is really, I like how romantic this is getting into February, which is a Valentine's Day month. And uh, I, I just love kind of the romance, the romanticism of these illustrations. They're so, so cute. Okay, so now that I've done this, I think I want to pause and see how I'm going to do the dates up at the top. I, I really like to go decorative with my dating. <laughs> and uh, I think if I want to keep, well, let's see how many swatches we have. So we've got one, two, three four. Okay. I only have four, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah. I only have four paint swatches, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe, let me see what this will look like. If I just do kind of ripped pages like this, might be kind of, it's a little weird, but I also have the horizontal, but I think I want to stick with the same type of washi this week so I could just kind of go for it I did check out really quickly if I had any more large numbers in this book for this specific week and I have enough of these jumbos so we're going to use the jumbos so I'm less concerned about like this being like matchy matchy because I'm going to put the dates pretty straightforward. So the dates will make a lot of sense on the spread. And then what's happening underneath it might be a little chaotic, but I think it will look really pretty. So we're just going to keep going with that and hope that what I have in my head works, <laughs> works out. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, oh no, we're having issues. Got to be careful with this extra wide washi. Let me see if I can rip this and Start over with a fresh batch. I will use that later, but okay, so we've got, let's do something like that. I'm okay with losing this top row for writing up here and using that for dating because I, yeah, there's plenty of space further down below. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And I'm going to try to do a slightly different shape for this end piece, maybe like so, just to make that look a little bit different. Gosh, I like already, this is so beautiful and so romantic. I love it. I kind of wonder if I should use this guy to, hmm. Part of me wants to go all the way up with the decor because this seems kind of, I don't know, blocky it's, it doesn't have that like feminine undertone like the rest of this does but we'll keep going okay so let me grab the dates and start laying those down uh i'm so getting to like the bare the bare minimum here so monday what day is monday is monday the 31st yes monday is the 31st so and i'm a monday through sunday planner i just like having my weekend butted up next to each other and so we're gonna start with the Monday and I'm gonna put the date right along this line right here and I'm gonna do that all the way across and that will ensure that these numbers stay pretty darn straight I can get in here to the one and throw that really center try to stay on the line so that stays all together and we just go all the way through so yeah how are you guys doing today you doing all right I hadn't been feeling super like motivated lately to decorate and then today I just had this moment of like I'm into it I want to do something like cute and romantic and so uh yeah, when the motivation strikes, I got to go with it, you know? I got to go with the motivation. Already so romantic. Okay, so let's get over here. I really need to learn how to use my Cricut because then I can make my own jumbo letters. Hold on, I've got to make sure I get the right line here. So that would be 
in this one. Because I'm almost out of these and I really, I don't want to buy more. I, I have a couple shops that folks have recommended, recommended that do these large clear numbers. The fonts aren't my particular favorite. I really like this font. Um, and so, yeah, rather than spending more money, I need to really learn how to use my Cricut so that I can make, make these numbers in a font that I like. And then they're my very own. And I think it'll feel good to have um, like stickers that I made in my own planner. Do you find that to be true? If you have a Cricut and you use your own stickers in your planner, do you find it to be like really more gratifying? Like, oh, not only did I make this spread, but I made the stickers in the spread. So then you feel super, um, what, self-sufficient, I guess? I think that would be so awesome. This is a bone. This is a paper folding tool. You can find it anywhere. I saw one at Michael's the other day and that kind of surprised me. Fiskars has one and it's a paper folding tool. I mean, there's nothing really special about it except for you feeling super fancy having special tools for your decorative planning. And I use the paper folding tool, the bone, for pushing out excess air in my clear stickers. It just makes them look so much... I don't know. Makes them look more gelled into the uh, into the spread, which I, which I really really like. What I don't like right now is how the writing has clustered in the middle of the the numbers, and I want this to be extended a little bit. So I'm gonna see if there's a way. I don't think there's a way to really match, but we'll go a little bit further. So this was one of the remnants that I pushed off. And I'm just gonna throw that down like that, although it's a little bit too straight of a line. So let me kind of make this a little bit more crooked like that. And then I wonder if I can add maybe something like that. No, nope, still looks like too much of a line. So I'd have to, let me find another, I got this whole piece that kind of went wonky. Maybe if I grab something like that. Because you can't really like read what the writing says, so I'm, all, I'm totally fine with having words that don't match up right next to each other. I think that's just fine. Let's see if I can add. Maybe I'll try to add this underneath the 31. It's kind of hard. Once you've used the bone, it's kind of hard to lift the sticker back up. This is where it, is really handy to have undo in your collection, which I do have, but I don't know where my bottle is. That's kind of weird. So I'm just going to put this lined up as close as possible to the writing in alignment. And there, now it goes a little bit underneath the 31. And then I'm just gonna push this, push this, back down. I have been thinking ad nauseum about how I want to decorate my February spread, my catch-all spread. And what's hard for me is I'm not a big pink fan. I mean, I'll do it, you know, when the season calls for it. And the season is calling for it, but everyone's going to be doing pink, pink Valentine's Day themed spreads. And your girl is kind of on the struggle bus with that idea. Really just unsure of, yeah, if I wanna go for it. I also, of course, have the super lovely Valentine's Day sticker book. And so I definitely want to use that, but I don't know, I wanna try to come up with something unique and I end up stressing myself out, you know, trying to come up with something that hasn't been done before. and. Here's the deal, like, uh-oh, we're ripping a little bit. There is nothing new under the sun. You could try so hard to do a spread that you think is so unique, and then, like, someone will tell you, someone did that last season, last year. And then it's like, oh, man. Oh, well. Okay, so I added a little floater over there, 
And that kind of is setting the tone so that I can add some more floaters. I don't want this to be a solid line. I really do want it to be pieces, like shrapnel, you know, shrapnel of, of handwriting. Like, you know, someone ripped up a letter and, uh, and then it got discovered hundreds of years later. A love letter was found and re-pieced together. And then the son of the author with the daughter of the girl that found it fall in love. That's what we're doing. That is what we're doing with this ripped up <laughs> look today. Okay, so we have dated our planner. We have not added days of the week. Um, uh, I'm not sure I need to add days of the week. What do you guys think? I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'm so on the fence about it, I'm not going to do it. What I am going to do this week is, instead of leaving this all open like I have in the past. Oh, wait, let me add one more rip of the this guy. I'm going to add this down in the corner just because... I'm a sucker for balance. And if I have something up in this area, I need to have something down here. You never want to leave a corner behind. You don't wanna, don't wanna leave it behind. And ideally, it's not overly matchy-matchy, but it pays homage, homage to the rest of the spread. So we're gonna do this little corner here that's paying homage or homage, depending on if you feel like um, pronouncing the H today. This will kind of harken back to the left margin. And I still have writing here. Sundays, I try to keep it low profile when it comes to work. And so this is plenty of space for me. Okay, so we've done that. And I think we want to add, I want to add maybe this little guy down here. The question is, what angle? At what angle do we position? Is it like this guy? Or is it this way? I think we want the feet to be somewhat straight. So I'm going to add the feet there. And since we are painting, let's add one of these smaller paint palettes. Like that. And, hmm. I think I want to add, we've got more, we've got more paint brushes. Let me, let me put these all out here. I might not use the planner in this spread. I definitely feel like we need paint brushes, maybe the smaller ones. So I'm going to add the smaller paint brushes here. And hopefully you guys can see, I'm going to have them kind of coming off of the page. But I just want to make sure that the tip of the brush is still, there we go, is still on there. Move these out of the way and trim this off. This is so pretty. You know what's funny is last week I used a dashboard layout for this planner, for my business planner. And I, I used to use a dashboard and I thought I loved it. And honestly, I kind of missed the teacher layout. So this I think might be the last time that I'm planning in the teacher layout though. Next week you might see me planning in the meal planning planner. I, I mentioned this in my stories and my musings that the meal planning planner has a similar layout to this and it got me super pumped about using it and so I did order it. It will be arriving soon and yeah this is gonna Watch me do my social media business, what is Elizabeth doing with her life, planning in a meal planner. That should be very interesting, so you'll have to make sure you're following along for that journey. Should be a fun one. Okay, so, and I think what I'll do over here is, like, this will maybe be my totals for the week, maybe, of whatever I'm tracking, whether it's followers, subscribers, income, whatever. Whatever it is, I think I'm going to use this little canvas for that. I think that'll be super, super fun and pretty. Okay, so I guess I'm not going to use the layering basics this week, huh? Unless I want to use some of the, look at these colors. They're so pretty, but they might be a little too punchy. 
unless I use, and then these paint swatches, oh my goodness, uh, unless I use some of the more neutral ones, and I just don't think that's a good idea for me this week. So, I'm going to add some functional boxes, maybe, maybe I'll just put them, I'll disperse them equally across the week and then I'll just decorate around them. That's honestly the easiest way to do clusters. If you're ever wondering how do people do clusters and make them look so cute, uh, my tip, I don't think this is how everybody does it, but what I would do is just add the boxes first and then cut the stickers with a flat edge and put those around the clusters. In clusters of three, ideally. Three to five, always an odd number. Always the odd number looks great. So, um, and I don't even know like what I'm gonna use these boxes for. That's why I don't often do clusters is because I I don't know what to, I don't, I don't like not having a plan for what I'm going to do with them, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna put one there and I'm using black boxes because I feel like colors really pop better when you when you use bigger boxes. I'm gonna use a, or not bigger boxes, black boxes. I'm gonna use one of these big guys. And I'll also say that boxes outside the lines, if you're wondering why people do that, it's because it just looks cool. <laughs> so if you're new to decorative planning and wondering why, even though these boxes fit inside, they, from a decorative standpoint, look better when they're just out of the box. If you're doing vertical hourly planning, then it is better to, let me move my fingers out of the way. Then it is better to keep things blocked down so that it follows the vertical line of the day. But I don't know, with this particular planner, I feel totally fine going kind of all over the place. So I'm assuming this box will fall for this day, this box for this day. I could have this box work for the first and the second, in which case I wouldn't need another box, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a box up here just to fill this in a little bit. And this feels a little bit empty down here now. And so what I'll probably do is, now I'm kind of wondering if I should continue. Maybe I'll throw some paints down here just to kind of help, help kind of fill this in a little bit more like that. And we've got the pink and then maybe the peach because I know we've seen this peach here. So let's throw this. Let's see, should I just go like Maybe that, let it kind of go off the page. Hmm, now I'm second guessing that decision. Could go like right there. No, I'm gonna hold off on laying this guy down. Let's keep going with the boxes. What might end up happening is this box coming up. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and peel it off ever so slightly and set it aside because I do like that size. Let's grab kind of this medium sized box and I'm gonna put this right here. And maybe I'll throw this little guy right here. And then I do want a box here, which I could cluster maybe two boxes together, like one this size. And let's do this little baby, baby box. And I'm grabbing boxes from the Layering Basics book, the Amber Planzer Day book. There are colorful boxes in the back that match the splotches, but I just grabbed the black ones, kind of cheating. Since they're here, I figured I might as well use them. Okay, so We've got the boxes down. I'm gonna lift this up because I'm not convinced yet if I can lift it up without doing too much damage. A little bit of damage, but it could be worse. I might want another box down here. Let's start adding some decorative elements. 
And when it comes to decorative elements and making clusters, I'm a big fan of cutting stickers. Cutting stickers to create some dimension. And so I think for this one, since I want so much of the paint to be sticking out, I'm gonna try to lift this corner back up and put the paint underneath it if I can. Some, oh, we're having some difficulties. Sometimes you wanna put the sticker over and sometimes you wanna put the sticker underneath. In this case, I want to put the sticker underneath, but I can't lift that up because I don't know where my undo is. This is a real problem. Let me try coming at it from another angle. And when I'm lifting a sticker that's really stuck on there, I'm pushing down as I'm pulling. So push down as you're pulling. And then I'm going to throw this guy right here. And ooh, this box has seen better days, but we're gonna just go with it. So we've got that. I think we're gonna add some washi to this too, additional washi, if I can't get enough um, extra texture on there. So since we have paint over there, I think it's always a good idea to add a little bit of paint somewhere else on the other part of the page. And maybe, maybe this one is going kind of off the page like that. So I still have writing space in the box, but it's kind of popping out like that. And I could use this paint maybe down here if I want to add a little bit more. Sure. I always try to replace the stickers that I cut. I try to put them somewhere else on the page just so they don't get they don't get wasted. And let's see, I know we need more, we need more swatch action. So let me see, how would we want to do this? Maybe something like that. And then this big guy like that. Or what I could do is actually separate these. Yeah, I'm gonna separate just to get rid of some of the excess um, white out of there. And do the same thing with this one, cutting the excess white off. If I can get it to rotate. And we'll just lay that on top of the, kind of on top of the other one. Or maybe we'll go upwards. Or do we go super? Hmm. Do we go wonky or do we go? My inclination is always to, when making clusters, cover over the point where the first two stickers connect which in this case is right here. So we'll do that and then I'll just put one this way, like so. So we've got those guys. And I need some, I need more kind of blue-gray action. So maybe I'll do, maybe something a little more avant-garde with that one. And Hmm, this watch is super big. I wonder if I should do the smaller one over here and then do this bigger one, maybe like that, kind of like a rainbow. Or should I go like that? I think I need more space over here filled in. Let me, let me hold off on that first. Let's put, let's, let's use the planner, shall we? Let's just go ahead and use the planner and maybe put the planner, if I put the planner here, I'm trying to add more like blue gray to the spread. 
Do you know what I mean? And to kind of fill this in a little bit more, fill in this space a little bit more. So I could do something like, I think I'd need to go a little bit lower. And if I were to lay that there, I wouldn't use that swatch because that would be a little bit too, too much gray. I'm gonna put this guy up here. Or should I put it down here? Maybe I'll put it down here and then lift this guy back up. And, hmm, I do think this should probably go here. It's just the angle I'm unsure of. And maybe this is a chance to add a, another acrylic paint. I think if we did something like that, let's do it. Like so, and I feel like we need more over here. So let's, my paint swatches don't match. So if that's more of like a peachy, I do have a peachy swatch here, which I could add like this. Yep, let's do that. And then Ooh, this is so tricky. I'm trying to make sure that the paint colors are evenly distributed and that they make sense. I think we need a little bit more color here. And then we still have this kind of mystery spot. I do have another paint. So maybe we go with this guy and this could just be kind of thrown I just want to make sure I have enough space to write on Saturday so maybe this one this one will have to go but I've also lost writing space on Friday so this is where things get a little more complicated placement. I think because I have it underneath the box there, I need to have it underneath the box here. But I'm going to go ahead and just do it over the box like that. Okay. What else do we want to do? So what do we have left? We have, we got rid of a sheet. We have a journal, we've got two journals and paint, and that's not enough for me to do a whole spread, so we're gonna have to add this guy for sure. And let's just add it maybe kind of wonky going out off the page here. That kind of helps fill this in a bit like so. So now the side margin really is just like a smattering of illustrations, which I think is really, really pretty. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I don't know what to do with the planners. I don't wanna, I don't wanna take up too much space. So what I'm gonna do with this sheet and I do this a lot with my all sticker sheets, whether they are small shop sticker sheets or happy planner sticker sheets. I will peel off the white paper backing and add all consolidate stickers, sticker sheets, I should say, like so. So I will add this to my JoJo's Pretty Paper Shop book. Okay. So, I feel like I need a little bit more. What do you guys think? It's very pretty. 
but I feel like it needs a little bit of structure. And that's what always gets me back with not wanting to do clusters and stuff is I feel like it lacks, I don't know, clusters seem to lack like order and I'm a very symmetrical person. So maybe we should see if we can just add some, should we just add some like bullets or something? This is the Functionally Chic sticker book. I grab it a lot just because it's got a lot of black and white stickers, obvi. And there are some bullets. Let me see what these might look like. If I kind of added them. See, I don't, I think if they're too big, they take up too much space. I could cut them. You know what I mean? Like I could put, hmm. I could cut them so it's three bullets per day. That could work. That could very much work. Let me just, let me do that. Let me try cutting, cutting this down. So it's it's got five bullets, but if I cut it down to three, what would that look like? I'm not sure. And what I would probably do is not pay too much mind to whether or not the dots line up with the lines and use them more as a signal of where I'm writing notes. If that makes sense. It's a guideline for me. So this could go really anywhere. Maybe we go up here. And then we can throw one a little bit lower. So I don't like, unless I'm doing a super symmetrical sh spread, like the Align plan with me, where I just like went full gusto on symmetry, um, there's no reason why the bullets need to be all in alignment. And they look a lot better when they're not, in my opinion. So yeah, I guess this will just kind of show me where I can where I can write this week. So let's put one here. Let's go a little bit higher because I think this one's gonna need to go down here, which is kind of nice. It's got almost a full box of writing space. And then kind of a waste with these two bullets that are getting cut off, but I know in my heart of hearts, I'm not gonna use them. So we're just gonna be, we're not gonna hashtag use all the sticker when it comes to these guys. So let's add, if I know that this one, the only option it has is to be right here, then I'm gonna go ahead and lay that one down right there. And then maybe we'll, this one right here and that is on the line do I like it on the line or should I move it I should probably move it I gotta make sure we at least stay in the lines with the check boxes even if we're going outside the box with the colorful boxes so we'll go go back there not perfect but it'll work. All right, now are we done? See, when, when spreads are overly chaotic like this, they kind of stress me out. So we'll see how this goes this week. There is no doubt in my mind though, that I love the illustrations. They are a no brainer for me. They are so, so pretty. Jojo nailed it, nailed it with this illustration, this illustration set. This is a mini collection. So, um, four sheets in the mini collection. You can buy them in a set of four. Let me grab a disc bound notebook so that we can see what this looks like on discs. That's probably one of the most important things. And seeing it on discs allows me to see if there are any changes that I want to make. So let me put this down and throw this on. 
it really helps getting an overview too. So once this is in, I'm going to stand up, look over it, give it a good looky-loo so I can see, am I satisfied with looking at that all week? I gotta say, for sure satisfied. This is so pretty and it really is due to the illustrations being so pretty. And they work really well with this washi tape. So I am liking the way that that looks. I'm considering adding days of the week. Yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of feeling like we need days of the week. So let me look back in here. And I maybe would have let it go if I hadn't put this on discs. But sometimes it just feels right. When you look over it and it seems like something's missing. Let's see what this looks like if we use black, black stickers and we went like super straight all the way across. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, this center line and putting it right in the middle. What do you guys think? Now's the time, leave a comment. I think I'm gonna do it. I mean, the black looks a little, it's harsh, but I feel like it does well with the lighter colors. So we're gonna keep going. We've got Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday. And these are again from, who are these from? Live Love Posh's Functional Chic Sticker Book. Which reminds me, speaking of small shop sticker books, I did post in my stories over on Instagram that JoJo, JoJo's, um, not, jo not JoJo's, so there's JoJo's Pretty Paper Shop who does the hand-drawn illustrations. And then there's JoJo from Mojo JoJo Plans who does functional sticker books. She did a restock. So if you've ever been curious about or desiring of picking up the like colorful boxes and black boxes sticker books, the data sticker book, those are all from Mojo Jojo Plans and she restocked. So now would be the time to get those if that is something that is of interest to you. All right, what do we think? I think that's nice. I think that added a little bit more dimension to it. And it is very nice for me to very clearly see Monday through Sunday. All right, friends, I think I'm going to call it a video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what is your favorite small shop for decorative stickers? I would love to know that. Obviously, I talk a lot about JoJo's Pretty Paper Shop because she illustrates her own uh, stickers. I also love, according to Ali, I was on her rep team. She also does amazing stickers. Caitlin Plans, amazing stickers. Would love to know your favorite small shop for illustrations and decorative stickers. Leave a comment down below and y'all engage with each other per the usual if you want to. Um, I really have enjoyed seeing the comments and people replying to people's comments. It's, it's super fun. And I do reply to comments. So if you want to ask me a question, go ahead and do that. Um, come hang out with me over on Instagram. My handle is ejjoyful underscore plans. It is always a good time. And if you'd like to hang out with me again, I would love if you subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. Until next time, friend, God bless you and keep you. Do something creative today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.